All right, so today we're going to do some examples of uh, ray tracing and analytical method to solving lens and mirror problems. So let's start uh, with the first one. Let's say an object is placed um, 20 centimeters. from a converging lens whose focal length is 5 centimeters. We want to solve for the normal things. We want to know what's the image distance and the three characteristics. So I'll start with the uh, ray tracing, the actual graphical method itself. So we're told we have a converging lens. Here's a converging lens. Here is our principal axis. And I'll place the focal length. Let's say the focal point is five centimeters. So that's about five centimeters, let's say. Again, for a lens, you put one on each side. Then we put our object that's 20 centimeters away. So this is 5, 10, 15. Here's about 20. There's our object. All right, so now we need to draw our lines. Uh, let's take the first line. It'll be in red. This one parallel to the principal axis to the lens. There it is. Now, obviously, I drew the lens a little short. Just pretend like the lens is infinitely big. So even though my line is on top of the lens, it's still going through it. And so the rule is, for a converging lens, the first line goes parallel to the principal axis, hits the lens, then bends downwards to go through the focal point. So there's that. Now the second line I can draw, this is going to go straight through the center of lens without curving. There we go. Where these two lines cross right here, that's my image, so the arrow goes down to that point. And that's the ray tracing method. If I were to have done this perfectly accurately, um, I'm looking at this, it looks like the image, first of all, it's a real image because it's on the right side of the lens. It looks to be about 10 centimeters or so uh, for the image distance. It's inverted because the arrow is upside down. And the image arrow looks smaller than the object arrow. So it's a minimized image. Now we want to do this analytically. So I'll move to the next page and do it. And we just need to remember this information. The object is placed 20 centimeters. So object distance is 20. The focal length is 5. And this is a converging lens, so it's positive 5. And I want to know the rest of the information. So, okay, I start with the imaging equation that says 1 over F is 1 over DO plus 1 over di. Now we just plug our numbers in. So 1 over 5 is 1 over 20 plus 1 over di. I want to solve this for di, so I bring the 1 over 20 over. It's 1 over 5 minus 1 over 20 is 1 over di. So 1 over 5 minus 1 over 20, of course you got to get a common denominator. So 1 over 5 becomes 4 over 20 minus 1 over 20 is 1 over di. So 4 over 20 minus 1 over 20 is 3 over 20. But remember, I don't want 1 over di. I have to flip it to get di itself. So di is 20 over 3, which is 
6.67 centimeters. So here's my first answer. Actually, my first two answers. First answer is what's the image distance? The image is 6.67 centimeters away from the uh, lens. But it also tells me a second thing. Because this image distance is positive, this also tells me it's a real image. But how do I get the other two pieces of information? I have to use the magnification equation. Magnification is minus di over do. So minus di I just found was 20 over 3. I'm using fractions just because it's easier. You could use the decimal. DO for this problem was 20. So minus 20 over 3 over 20 is minus 1 third. So this gives me the other two pieces of information I need. First of all, the fact that it's negative, that tells me it's inverted. And then, the fact that this number itself, regardless of the negative or positive, the number itself is less than 1, so that tells me it's minimized. So there we go. There's our answer. We know the image distance, where it's placed. It's a real image, inverted, and minimized. And if we compare to our drawing, inverted, real because it's on the right side of the lens, minimize, the arrow smaller. Now, the 6.67, I said it kind of looks 10 centimeters. Obviously, it's because my drawing is not perfect. I'm not using a ruler. I'm not using perfect straight lines and everything. But it's reasonable. Of course, I trust my math more than my drawing. But the drawing does pretty much match what I got analytically. So I could be fairly happy with the result there. Now let's try another example. <clears throat> let's place an object. Is placed 10 centimeters. from a converging lens. whose focal point is 15 centimeters. And I want to solve the same problem. Four pieces of information. Image distance, and then real or uh, virtual inverted or upright, and um, magnified or minimized. So again, I'll start with the drawing just so we get a little more practice. Here is our converging lens, principal axis. Focal point is at 15. Let's say this is 15 here. This time our object is placed 10 centimeters. So about here. All right, so I'll do the same thing I did before. First line parallel hits the lens, then it bends downwards to the focal point. The second line goes straight through the center of the lens without bending. And now we see an issue. Even though this is a converging lens, my light rays are not converging. So that tells me no matter how far I extend, extend those lines, they'll never cross. So I'll never get a real image. However, one thing I can do <clears throat> when you reach this place is extend them backwards. So these are fake lines, these dashed lines. They're not real, but they do show us something. And it shows us that they do cross. And where they cross over here, that's where my image is located. So 
What does this tell me? Well, first of all, this tells me I'm going to get a virtual image because the image is on the same size as the object where no light actually exists. It's upright and it's magnified. But of course we want to check this with the math. So we say uh, object distance was 10 and the focal length was 15. So we go through the imaging equation again. 1 over F is 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. 1 over 15. Again, this is still a converging lens, so it's still a positive focal length. Equals 1 over 10 plus 1 over DI. I want DI by itself. So 1 over 15 minus 1 over 10 is 1 over DI. Oops. Again, I need to get a con uh, common denominator of 15 and 10, and that's going to be 30. So 1 over 15 becomes 2 over 30. 1 over 10 becomes 3 over 30. So 2 over 30 minus 3 over 30 is minus 1 over 30. But, again, that's 1 over di, so I have to flip it. And I get di is minus 30. So there we go. I now know where the image is located. 30 centimeters away from the lens. However, because it's negative, that tells me it's on the left side of the lens. Because it's a negative image distance. That also tells me, of course, it must be a virtual image. Because of the negative sign. But we want the other two pieces of information, so again we go magnification, minus di over do, di minus 30, do 10. So the negatives cancel and I get positive 30 over 10, which is positive 3. So now I look at this number, I say the sign of the magnification is positive, so that means it's upright. And the number itself is bigger than 1, so it's magnified. And there we go. Again, I compare this to my drawing. It should be virtual, upright, and magnified. Virtual, it's on the left, perfect. Upright, the arrow is pointing upwards. Magnified, obviously the gray arrow is bigger than the black arrow. And I'm told it's negative 30, so 30 centimeters to the left. Well, the green point here is 15, and that's about twice as far. So yeah, negative 30 looks right to me. So again, analytically speaking, it all works out. All right, let's do one more example. This time I'll do a diverging lens. Um, an object is placed 20 centimeters away from a diverging lens whose focal length is 15 centimeters. And of course, again, we have the uh, same problem. We want the image distance and we want the three pieces of information about it. Let's go ahead and draw it first. Diverging lens, that's the one that looks kind of like an hourglass shape. Principal axis. Focal length of 15 centimeters, so let's say... 5, 10, 15, so 15 over here, and now our object, we're told the object is at 20, so that's about here. 
All right, so first line, parallel to the principal axis, to the lens. Once it hits the lens, I now have a diverging lens. So instead of the light curving downwards towards the focal point, it's going to curve upwards. But exactly how upwards it's going to point? Well, in such a way as if I were to extend this backwards, it would go through that focal point instead. So there's my guideline. So my light ray goes like that. The other line I can draw, that's the line that goes straight through the center of the lens without curving. So there we go. And now again, looking on the right side, my two light rays do not converge. They better not. This is a diverging lens. That's the definition. But it also means we're not going to get a real image from this problem. Those lines never cross. <clears throat> However, if I look backwards, they do cross right here. Now, again, this is a fake image because the light rays are not really on this side. This dotted line does not exist. However, this acts like the image. And so we're told this image is on the left side of the lens, so it's virtual. Uh, it's upright because the arrow is vertical upwards. And the gray arrow, the image arrow, is smaller than my object, so it's minimized. Now, let's do it analytically. So, we have an object. The object is placed uh, 20 centimeters away. And the focal length of this lens is 15. However, this is a diverging lens, so that means the focal length has to be negative. That's very important. And now we solve the problem as we did before. 1 over F is 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. Plugging in my numbers, 1 over F 1 over negative 15 equals 1 over 20 plus 1 over di. di by itself, I get minus 1 over 15 minus 1 over 20 is 1 over di. Common denominators, once again, uh, this time I believe the common denominator will be 60. So negative 1 over 15 becomes negative 4 over 60. And 1 over 20 becomes 3 over 60. This is 1 over di. Adding these fractions, negative 4 minus 3 is minus 7 over 60. Flipping it to get di by itself, di is negative 60 over 7. Now, if you want the decimal, that's about negative 8.6 centimeters. All right, so we now know where the image is, about 8.5 centimeters away from the lens, negative, so that means it's going to be on the left side, which is a virtual image. Solving for our magnification, M is minus DI over DO. DI, let's say, is minus 60 over 7. DO is 20. So the negatives cancel. 60 and 20 becomes a 3, and I get minus, I mean, I'm sorry, positive 3 over 7. All right, so what does this tell us? First of all, this magnification is a positive number, so it's upright. And the number itself, 3 over 7, is less than 1, so it's minimized. And there's our answer. And now let's compare it to the graphical method again. Virtual image, so an image on the left. Upright, the arrow should be upwards. And minimized, the arrow should be smaller. 
And indeed, that's what we get. Also, I get an image distance of about eight and a half on the left. Looking at my picture, this big green dot here, that's 15. That arrow is a little more than halfway to the 15. Eight is a little more than halfway. Perfect. It looks good. So I could be happy with our analytical results. And that's how you're going to solve these problems. Every lens and mirror problem, we've gone through the graphical method. We've seen the correct rays to draw. Analytically speaking, very easy. We've just got two big equations, the imaging equation and magnification. All you have to do is be careful about what type of lens or mirror you have. If it's converging, it's a positive focal length. If it's diverging, it's negative. You plug your numbers in, solve for whatever it is you're trying to solve for, and then let these answers tell you the characteristics. If you get a positive image distance, it's a real image. A negative image distance, it's a virtual image. For magnification, if it's a positive magnification, it's an upright image. Negative magnification is inverted. And then the absolute value of the magnification, that is just the number itself. If that number is bigger than one, it's magnified. If it's a number smaller than one, it's minimized. And then so no matter what problem I give you, no matter what sets of numbers you have, you should be able to get these results. So I hope this is helpful in understanding how to do some of these problems, and I'll see you next time.